Hello, 8th graders. Today we are doing Module 5, the problem set for Lesson 3. And in this lesson, our main uh, focus is that um, we've been learning about functions. A function is you have one output for every, one and only one output for every input. Um, and if you remember um, linear equations, which we did through Module 4, Every input only gave us one output with linear equations. So linear equations are types of functions. So we're going to go through um, linear equations or linear functions. Um, so here we have a food bank distributes cans of vegetables every sun, Saturday. The following table shows the total number of cans they have distributed since the beginning of the year. Assume that this total is a linear function of a number of weeks that have passed. So describe the function being considered in words. So basically, we know that the number of cans depends upon the number of weeks, right? The number of cans we have is going to depend upon how many weeks we collected them. So I'm going to say the number of cans is a function of the number of weeks. Number of weeks. Okay, the number of cans is a function of the number of weeks. The more weeks we have, the more cans we're going to get. So now they want us to write the linear equation that describes the total number of cans, y, in terms of the weeks, x, that have passed. So I'm going to come down here for b. Okay, let's do b down here. y is going to equal, it's going to, is dependent upon, or is a function of the number of weeks, right? But how many do we get in a week? Well, in one week, we got 180, right? 12 weeks, we got 2,160. So let's let's make sure. Let's go um, 2,160 divided by that 12, and we get the 180. So we have that constant rate of 180 each week. So y is going to equal 180 cans for every week. y equals 180x. Let's look at C. Suppose, assume the food bank wants to distribute 20,000 cans of vegetables. How long will it take? So C, remember we have the number of cans equals 180 cans per week. So we want our total number of cans to be 20,000, right? So 20,000 is going to equal 180 x to solve this we're going to divide by 180 and our x is going to equal let's do this 20,000 divided by 180 ooh hmm well, let's round this to the nearest whole number because we're talking about weeks, right? So um, what would we round this to be? 111, right? Approximately 111 weeks. Okay, a little bit more than 111 weeks. Let's go to D. D, the manager has forgotten to record that they distributed 35,000 cans on January 1st. So before this started, um, January 1st, they already had 35,000 cans out. So now Y still equals that 180 per week. But remember, we already had 35,000 cans distributed, right? So what do we have to do to this? Add plus 35,000 because we got to add that to what was already distributed. And then E says 
says, I use this, part, this equation in D, determine how long it will take for the food bank to pass out 80,000 cans. And they want to know in years, okay, in years, 80,000 cans. Using this equation, how many 80,000 cans? So 80,000 is going to be Y, right? This is going to be 80,000 equals 180X plus 35,000. Well, minus the 35,000. We get 180x equals um, 45,000. I'm going to divide by 180. So let's look here. Two hundred and fifty. So it's going to take us two hundred and fifty weeks. That's fine and dandy, but they asked us to tell us in years. So if there's twenty-four months, I'm sorry, twelve months in a year, then we got to take this and divide it by twelve, right? Put it in groups of twelve to figure out how many years. So we're going to divide this by twelve. Oh, and we're going to get 20.8. Uh, 20.8, I'm going to round to be 21. So about 21 years. It's a long time. Okay, let's go on to problem number two for today. We have another linear function. Uh, they want us to describe in words, okay, um, function. So we have the miles, right, distance in miles. And that is going to be dependent on how far we drive or up on the plane. How far we fly depends upon how many hours we're in the plane. The longer we're in the plane, the longer we can fly, right? So we want to describe this in words. So I'm going to do A down here, A. Um, so our distance in miles, or I'm going to say our total miles, our total distance, is a function, because it depends upon, so it's a function of the hours traveled. Okay. Write an equation that gives the distance y in miles as a linear function of the number of hours spent flying. Well, let's make sure we have a constant rate here. So let's go our miles per hour, right? So let's try this one. We go 1062 and 5 tenths divided by 2.5, right? Miles divided by hours. And let's see what that rate is. And we get 425, 425 miles an hour. Woo, pretty fast. Let's do this one. This would be 1,700 divided by 4, right? 1,700 divided by 4. Oops. Divided by 4. 425 again. And this one, I'm sure, will be this one. Well, let's do it. 1785 divided by 4.2. 425. So um, our constant rate is 425. So to write an equation, B, we would say Y equals 425X, right? Total miles is 425 times every hour flown. 
C, assume that the plane is making a trip from New York to Los Angeles, uh, which is a journey of approximately 2,475 4, miles. How long will it take the airplane to get to Los Angeles? So let's come up and do C. I'm going to do C up here. C. Um, so we have Y equals 425 times X. And we want to know how long it's going to take if Y is 2,475. Our total miles is 2,475. And so how many hours is that going to be? So to solve for X, we divide by 425. And X, let me see over here. Let's do 2,475 divided by 425. Ooh, what do you say? 5.8 hours? About 5, point, 5 and 8 tenths of an hour. Okay. D. Let's go to D. If the plane flies eight hours, how many miles will it cover? If our equation equals Y, total miles is 425 times every hour, and they're telling us that it flew for eight hours, so that eight hours is going to go into X, right? Because that's the number of hours. So Y is going to be 425 times eight. So Y is going to be... Let's do 425 times 8. 3,400 miles. Let's go on to number 3. Got a linear function here. Um, it gives the number of miles a car travels over again number of hours. So they want to know in words the function given. So let's do A here. Our miles is a function of hours, right? Miles is a function of time or hours traveled. The more hours we travel, the further we'll go. Okay. Write the equation. So they want us to know what this equation is. So let's see if we have a uh, constant rate. 203 divided by 3.5. Right. 203 divided by 3.5. Fifty-eight. Let's try this one. Two thirty-two divided by four. Fifty-eight. Yeah, it looks like we have that constant rate, right? So for B, our total miles is going to be fifty-eight times every hour we travel. Y equals fifty-eight x. Third one, assume that the person driving the car is going on a road trip to reach a location 500 miles away from the start. How long will it take for the person to get to their destination? So for C, if we have Y equals 58X, and we know that their total miles is 500, that's going to go have to go in for Y, right? So how many hours to go? How many hours do you have to drive? 58 miles an hour to get 500 miles. To solve for x, we're going to divide by 58. And x is going to equal, let's do this. Ooh, 8.6 or 8 and 6 tenths of an hour. Right, 0.6 tenths 
hours. Let's go to four. Four is a little trickier. Um, we have this equation, and they want us to describe the linear function. Um, but I'm going to show you something. If I go 7 divided by 2, I get 3.5. If I go 10 divided by 3, I'm not getting the same um, number. So I, I don't have that proportionality quite yet here. But remember another way to find out um, our with linear uh, functions. Remember these are linear. So to find out our slope of the graph, um, we can do a change in y over change in x, right? We go change in y over change in x. So from to get from 7 to 10 our change is 3. And to get from 2 to 3, our change is 1. So we'd have 3 over 1, or 3. So our slope's going to be 3. So we're going to want to take our x and multiply it by 3. But if I go 2 times 3, I get 6. What do I need to get 7? If I go 3 times 3, I'm going to get 9, but I want to get to 10. If I go 3 to, times 11, I get it at 33, but I only want 34. So what am I doing? If I am taking my x and multiplying it by 3, but to get y, I have to do something else. I have to add one more. So y equals 3x plus 1. If x is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. If x is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. If x is 8, 8 times 3 is 24, plus 1 is going to give me 25. x is 11, 3 times 11 is 33, plus 1 is 34. If x is 15, 3 times 15 is 45, plus 1 is 46. x is 20. 3 times 20 is 60, plus 1 is 61. If x is 23, 3 times 23 is 69, plus 1 would be 70. So we just completed the rule for the rest of the graph for part B. And let's look at number 5, our last problem for today. They want us to find the rule here. So let's once again do our change in y over change in x. Change in y over a change in x, right? That is going to give us our slope from here to here, from 6 to 11, which goes up by 5. And from here to here, it goes up by 5. So that's going to be 1, right? Let's try this one. 11 to 14, that goes up by 3. And 5 to 8, that goes up by 3. So that's, again, 1. So our, our slope's going to be 1. So we're going to have y for our rule. y equals 1x, or just x, right? But if I go 0 times x, I have 0. How do I get to 6? If, if I go 5 times, oh, if x is 5, how do I get to 11? If x is 8, how am I getting to 14? We're adding 6, aren't we? y equals x plus 6. We took our slope, right? We multiply by x by 1, and then add 6. So let's complete this. 13 plus 6 is 19. 15 plus 6 is 21. 18 plus 6 is 24. 21 plus 6 is going to be 27. Okay. Have a good day.